In this video, I'd like to talk about the concept of compound interest. And specifically, I want to talk about how to use the formula for compound interest. And as you can see, that formula is here boxed in this pink color. And essentially, we just want to know what all of these letters represent in the formula. So A, for instance, that's the total amount that you earn if you're investing, or if you're borrowing money, this is the total amount that you'll owe. Whereas P is our principal, that's our starting amount of either borrowed money or starting amount of invested money. R is the rate at which we're investing this. And it's usually given as an APR, which is an annual percentage rate, and it's always as a decimal. So when you're actually plugging your R value into the formula, you first want to change it from a percent into a decimal. And after R, we have N, where N is just the number of times we're going to compound in a given year. So you'll see some questions where you just compound it yearly. So in that case, N would be 1. But you could also compound it quarterly or daily or something like that. If we did it daily, N would be 365. And then T is just the time. And usually that's measured in years. So with all of this in mind, let's actually try to use the formula. So we have this first problem where we have John who's going to invest into an index fund. So let's just say, for example, that John's investing in the Dow Jones. And the Dow is essentially a collection of 30 of the top com companies out there. So when you invest in an index fund, you're investing in several stocks at once, essentially. So it's a little bit safer than individual stocks. And if you average out the returns for an index fund, 9% is a number you might hear a lot. Um, but this is an average. It could vary tremendously from year to year. And then we want to know how much money we have after 12 years. So we want to use the formula. It's A is equal to P plus 1 plus R over N to the N times T. But we're compounding this yearly. So we're, it doesn't tell us that we're compounding it quarterly or twice annually or daily or anything like that. So we can just assume that we have an N value of one. And we know that we're starting with 25,000. So that's our principal. Our principal is this $25,000. And our rate is that 9%. But like I mentioned above, we wanna change this to a decimal. And the word percent just means divide by 100. So 9% is the same thing as nine over 100. And we can essentially just move the decimal two times to make this 0 0.09. And then we know we want to calculate this after 12 years. So at this point, we can just plug everything into our formula. So we have that A is 25,000 multiplied by 1 plus our rate, which is 0 0.09. And that's divided by 1, but I won't even write that. And then we have 1 for N times by T, which is 12. So this is all raised to the 12th power. And when you're going to put this into the calculator, you got to use your order of operations. So we first want to simplify our parentheses to 1.09. And then you want to raise that to the 12th power first and then multiply by 25,000. And when you actually calculate this, what you get is a value of $70,316.62. So investing this 25 grand into an index fund over 12 years, you nearly triple your money at a rate of 9%. So let's now look at a second example problem. So this one, we have Lisa putting $5,000 into a savings account, and this time it's gonna compound quarterly. So our N value is essentially going to be four here. And let me just rewrite that equation so that we have it and are able to work with it. And it looks like we want to know how much she'll have after seven years if it's at a rate of one and a half percent. So our rate is that 1.5 percent, but we want to change it to a decimal. So we have 1.5 over 100 since percent just means divide by 100. And dividing by 100 just moves the decimal point two times to the left. So we get 0 0.015 for our rate. And our time, we know we're going to look at this after seven years. So T is seven in this case. Our principal is $5,000. And with all of these variables essentially accounted for, we just want to plug them in. 
So the amount that we're going to earn would be our principal, which is that $5,000, multiplied by 1 plus our rate, which is that 0 0.015, divided by n, the number of times we compound in a year. So that'd be dividing by 4, since we're compounding quarterly. And then we have that 4 for our number of times we're compounding, multiplied by our time, which is 7. So we have 4 times 7 as our exponent. And when we plug all of this directly into the calculator, what you get is a value of $5,552.46. Which should make some sense because savings accounts are not very aggressive in how much they return, so you wouldn't expect to get a lot back. And moving on to our, our final problem here. So we have that Mary accumulates a debt of $7,500 on her credit card. And let's just assume that she stops making payments. So how much will she owe in six months? So if she stops making payments, she's essentially just going to start accumulating interest. And in real life, it's probably more complicated if she just stops making payments. She'll probably have creditors going after her. But let's just assume that she can actually do this and will just accumulate that interest over six months. So again, I'm just going to rewrite our equation, but ultimately we just need to figure out what all of these letters are for this particular problem. So our principal, the amount that we're initially borrowing is $7,500. And our time, we're looking at six months, or remember T is always in years. So this would be 0.5 years, since it's only half a year. And our rate, is this 22.9%, which is fairly typical for a credit card. And a percent, remember we're just dividing by 100. And when dividing by 100, we can just move this decimal two places to the left. So we get point, or I should say 0 0.229 for our rate. And the number of times we're compounding this is daily. So that means 365 times in a year. So with all this in mind, let's just start plugging values into our formula. So we have that A is equal to our principal, that's 7,500, multiplied by one plus that rate, 0 0.229, divided by our compounding periods, but we're compounding daily, so that'd be divided by 365. And we're looking at a half year, but we have to multiply it by our compounding periods. So we get 365 times by 1 half. And now that we have all the values plugged into our formula, we can actually calculate how much we'll owe, or how much Mary will owe after the six months. And in total, what she'll owe after that six months is $8,409.54. So in summary, the main challenge with using this formula is just figuring out what all these different letters actually represent in your given problem. But once you have all of those letters figured out and have a number substituted for them, then you essentially just plug it into the formula and use the calculator to actually evaluate this.